Thank you for joining us for Ponte Ready. Uh, my name is Christian Martir on behalf of El Museo del Barrio. Uh, this program is part of El Museo en Tu Casa, which is our online bilingual initiative. I just want to start off by giving some, some background on the, the program itself and its intention. Uh, Ponte Ready is designed, as the name says, to get you right and ready for the week uh, by sharing culturally relevant um, programs aimed at addressing both your physical and mental health. Um, in the past, we've had Woke Foods, Manolo Lopez from Mofongo, and most recently, uh, Lindsay Ayala from uh, Bread and Butter. And of course, today we have, we're joined by Chef Gabriela Ramos. Uh, Gabriela, uh, some background information on, on her. Uh, she studied nutrition and holistic cooking at the Natural Gourmet Institute. Uh, before cooking professionally in New York City, she graduated with a Bachelor's of Sociology at Cal State Long Beach, California. Um, her indigenous Afro-Caribbean background and Spanish roots uh, are influential in her instinctual uh, approach to flavor, taste, and hand-picking ingredients that are personal to her. Uh, cooking is her, per her spiritual uh, practice, as well as sharing and connecting people through the intersection of culture. Gabriela believes food is healing and shares that this philosophy with a community through private chef work, pop-up, dinners, and catering. All right, that's a lot. <laughs> How Thank are you? Thank you for that. <laughs> How did you get started? Like, what, what led you to the, the to choose the culinary world? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think what led me to the culinary world is um, me sort of just following um, this voice inside me that was like, cook, cook, cook. <laughs> or it could be ancestors, it could be someone telling me like, this is, this is what you should do, this is what you should pursue. Um, I didn't know that I was gonna completely uh, be in the food industry. I thought it was just um, something that I really loved doing, passion of mine. Um, and once I moved to New York, I really figured out like, okay, well, this is my opportunity to do whatever it is that I want to do. Um, and food has always sort of been, you know, just a part of who I am. Right. Um, growing up in like a cooking family, like both of my parents, amazing chefs, cooks, my mom, um, I learned everything from her. Right. Um, also my dad too, he, uh, I think they're both foodies and they sort of brought us up um, always around food, you know, all of our events, parties is always centered around breaking bread, right. being around food, preparing it, cooking it. Um, and, and that still brings us joy to this day. And I think it's about family, food, food is family to me too, or food means, you know, family, because right. it's a way that we sort of connect with each other. It's like a language that we speak, um, through food mm -hmm. and so um i yeah i studied food at the natural gourmet institute because they had a focus on plant-based cooking right. and um i wanted to sort of have that background i didn't want to go to like the cia because that program was like a huge commitment lots mm -hmm. of money and and so i thought that this was sort of the the route for me to kind of bridge those two worlds of like wellness and health um with my spiritual practice of just cooking and how i can um bring those two worlds together wow. so um i've worked at several different restaurants in the city i've worked in fine dining for a little over a year that kicked my butt that was really really tough because i um prior to that i just cooked from home and right and um, did, did my own catering. Uh, I also, um, prior to me coming to New York, I started this pop-up with my brother and my aunt we right. were cooking uh, 30 plus people dinners out of our backyard. And like that, I went from cooking with my family, literally to stepping into this crazy, intense, um, high pace environment. So it was culture shock and, but I am grateful for it because it really taught me 
discipline and just how to sort of move with confidence in a kitchen. Um, Cause that's how you have to move in that world. It's, yeah, it's, it's very male, male dominated, white male dominated. Mm-hmm. And so um, that poses so many challenges and barriers at times. And so um, I did that for a little while for, I want to say a little over two years. Okay. And um, stepped out of that and started to cook privately um, with my own clients where I was able to sort of come up with these like personal menus Mm -hmm. to me and and my style of cooking, but then also keeping in mind their health and their wellness in order to sort of come up with these like very curated menus for the week. So um, that's what I've also been up to these last couple of years too right. um along with you know pop-ups and doing fun catering parties um and then now i currently work at red rabbit which is this social purpose company that provides healthy food in schools for kids mm-hmm. across all the boroughs so um i i sort of just started and i'm learning a lot about the company and right now we're providing thousands and thousands of meals for people that need it right now during this pandemic. So that has been really just eye opening and I felt honored to be able to be a part of that kind of work because I was not doing anything. Um, or, you know, I I was at home, you know, during COVID. And so, uh, being able to find this company and have a focus, you know, for, me right now and um we're figuring out schools and how they're gonna open and like mm-hmm. what that model is gonna look like so um i'll keep you posted once i find yeah. out more because <laughs> we're just in it right now and we're figuring out all of the logistics and like how it's gonna look like but i'm super excited to cook for kids in a school in that kind of setting and, right um have have my team and have um, my crew of people that I get to work with each day and prepare really like um, awesome meals for kids who really, you know, might possibly really might need that meal for that day or um, that might be their only meal that has whole food Mm -hmm. um, or greens or veggies. So, that's really exciting to me. And so now it kind of feels like everything is like making sense, you know, and that's oh. what I'm currently doing. Also, uh-huh. I'm selling some food too. Yes, you are. Yes, so you that are. has been a fun project that I've been able to take on during this quarantine because um, just at home with my ideas and figuring out how I can still reach people and, and connect with people and sort of share my, you know, my flavors, my food mm-hmm. in this packaged kind of way in a right. jar that you can take home and that you can use in any which way that you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been fun for me because there's people that are purchasing it that have never worked with it and right. don't even know what sofrito is. Mm-hmm. And so it's been nice to sort of make those connections and like, um, meet meet all these new people that are purchasing it so right. yeah i think it's, it's interesting because i think you know i know your background your father's puerto rican your mom's dominican and i know how, yes. how much health plays into in, into what you do right i think of the intention right right to make food but like to make it healthy right and i think there's a i i would say it's a, it's a common misperception that our what our natural food is, is unhealthy right i think it has been right. ways, but I think when you go back to actually very healthy. Uh, so right. Kind of like people are like people, you know, this concept like this discussion of like how unhealthy right. I kind of missed that. I was that last about how how you know the work you do, right? Particularly like what you just say, right? The sofrito, right? Um, you know, we do intentionally try to make it more healthy than it naturally is, right? You, yes, yes. About- okay. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, we were we were just talking about this a few days ago. Um, just how our just just in terms of the food from the Caribbean um, and and the, the way that people were eating before they were colonized was plant based, and um, this this idea of pernil and pork and all these different. Um, proteins that were introduced to us that came after so um eating in a more plant-based or veggie focused way does come natural to us and i think um for a lot of people we we sort of hold on to these memories with food like with fennig for example i love it so much and it's like it speaks to family gatherings, Christmas time, New Year's, like any gathering, that's what you see, that's what we're eating. But now I feel like I'm sort of shifting that um, into wanting to be healthier and wanting to eat a little bit more clean. <laughs> uh, but I'm not completely plant-based. I love having it every once in a while. So, And also I cook for these different clients that eat pork that eat beef so um you know just trying to find that balance but yes um naturally the way that Tainos ate you know we're mostly plant-based with a little seafood right. so um it's about kind of getting getting in in touch with who we are and in touch with our roots and like understanding that this is actually instinctual to us you know, we just have to listen. So, cool. Yeah. So, I, should we get started? Yeah, sure. Ready? So, what are you gonna make today? Um. So we're doing sofrito. Um. And I know everyone sort of has their own version. Um. Uh. I'm sure you you do it your own way, or your mom might do it her own way. Your grandmother. Absolutely. Um. Or your tia, your friend. Like I feel like everyone has their own way of preparing it. Right. Um, the way that I have been um, selling it to folks is like my own personal version of like what the sofrito is to me and how I like to cook with it. Um, the way that I learned how to make it is through my mom. So I remember her preparing it in a filo mm -hmm. from scratch mm -hmm. with garlic oregano like she would start with that first mm -hmm. and add all the other seasonings to it um but then when she got a food processor which okay. is a <laughs> game changer i think everyone should have this okay for a lot of different reasons but um it does all the work for you and it's really simple you just throw it all in here and um it's blends it all up it's kind of chunky because you don't want to put it in like the vitamix because i think it's just too smooth okay. so i like the texture of the food processor because it's just like chunky and like you could see what's in it okay uh so i like to use this to prepare it um but if you don't have this maybe a bullet would work or a blender but even the bullet kind of does it super super fine so maybe blender i would say you would say the trick um, but not to be too thick. I mean, you want it a little bit of thickness, not too, not too liquidy. Uh, I like it liquidy. You like it liquidy. Yeah. I like it liquidy because I like a lot of lime juice in it, right, like right. a ton. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's um what I prefer because I like to cook with a lot of lime, a lot of acid in mm -hmm. almost everything. Um, but it all depends. Like if you like it more garlicky. Right. put more garlic or whichever in ingredient that you love like mm -hmm. put a little bit more of that um i like mostly garlic mostly lime so oh. and then all the other ingredients are sort of in the background um so yeah should i show the ingredients yeah <laughs> so i have these big limes that i found always always get the ones that have the soft skin because those are the juiciest. Um, that's how you pick limes. Because <laughs> some people don't know. They get the like super hard ones and it's like, they're so dry. There's no juice. Right. 
Mm -hmm. So always get the smooth lines. Um, I have some oranges here, but mm, oranges, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to use it. I just have it here. Okay. Um, but I use sour orange, but I couldn't find any. Okay. So sometimes I find them, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just going to do lime. Wow. Um, I love lime. So I love the zest. I love the juice, everything. Um, super flavorful. It's different from lemon. It has a, di a completely different taste. Mm -hmm. And I recommend doing your own juice, like really making your own citrus juice because it's fresh, it's more potent. Mm -hmm. um, if you buy it already made, because I know they sell, yeah, like yeah. they'll sell a bottle of the already pre-made stuff. Don't get it. Don't do yeah, it's yeah. not good. Mm -hmm. I don't, me personally, I don't like it. Right. It has a weird taste to me and it's just, it's weird. I don't like it. <laughs> Um, so just do the real thing. Just do the real do the thing. thing. Mm -hmm. um, I also use this, which is like a citrus juicer. Mm -hmm. um, and you use this, and it's so easy. So this was like 15 bucks at Food Bazaar. So oh. <laughs> if you live in Brooklyn, go to Food Bazaar, 15 bucks. Um, lime. Some garlic right here. I got the already peeled stuff because... I just don't have the time. Right. It just takes way too long. When I was making the jars in the beginning, I literally was peeling all the garlic and it was insane. Takes right. forever. Mm -hmm. um, if you're down to do that, do it, but it only costs a couple more dollars to do the already peeled. Um, bell pepper, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I like red onion. Okay. Uh, I prefer it uh over any other onion i think it has more flavor or i just am biased i don't know i just really <laughs> like it i like it better than the white onion or i think the white onion's good but it's more for like i don't know if you're gonna cook it down you know mm -hmm. uh or if you're gonna put it in in soups or s stews i would do like spanish onion but okay. for this i like red okay the Spanish um, is like that's like the more like the it's not like white white it's more like the outside is a little bit almost brown like a light light brown. Yeah, those are the yellow onions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. and then cilantro, of course. This is my favorite for everything. Uh, I literally use it across the board for like all cuisines except right. Italian, but right. I use it with like. Asian flavors with Indian flavors, um, obviously with Caribbean cooking, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people that don't like it and it's just so interesting. I'm just like, they say it tastes like soap. I'm like, what? It just not taste <laughs> like soap. I don't understand. I don't understand that whole explanation. You don't like it um, soap? Parsley, parsley, no. That's a parsley would not work in this, nah. Parsley is like, it has, its own flavor profile. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of any other herb. Basil either. I don't think basil would work, but you can try it. Okay. Um, I like cilantro because it just um, complements the citrus mm -hmm. in this and it's so good. Yeah. Um, also, the reason why I like to put the onion and the bell pepper, also I have ajicito, which is um, a sweet pepper from the DR. These are from the DR that okay. I actually can, that I found um, in my supermarket. They have them, but for my Cali family, uh -huh. we don't have these over there. <laughs> I don't know why. They don't ship to California. Right. But um, they have them here because this is a Caribbean yeah, neighborhood. Right. Yeah, so you're going to see these. These are not slash bonnet they look like it but they're not they're actually oh. sweet and um yeah i like to put these too and then um what else am i putting in here turmeric turmeric okay turmeric um this was like i decided to put it in this because i saw um i follow the chef happy healthy latina uh, right. on Instagram. I'm sure there's a lot of folks that follow her. And um, I saw a video that she did when mm. she was making her sofrito and I was like, wow, she puts turmeric like 
that's amazing yeah, yeah. um i i love cooking with turmeric obviously because it's so good for you um but i i was like so surprised and just like in awe and i was like wow like i'm gonna try that mm. so i tried it and it gives the food um a nice color and it's just you know some some added vitamins some added good stuff into the sofrito and i feel like it's nice um talking to my mom you know the way that she prepares this is like garlic mm -hmm. oregano uh lime juice salt and pepper and that's it that's and it. hers is incredible you, right. you know because it's yeah not easy how can yeah. you know yeah it's yeah. like the way that she does it is super nice um but i just added all of this because i don't want to chop up the onions i don't want to chop up the bell pepper uh -huh. or the cilantro i add all of this to sort of bring it all together so that it's ready to go. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think that covers all the ingredients. So. Do you know what, what, what turmeric is good for? Like some of the things it's good for? Um, it's anti-inflammatory. Okay. So um, it's also really good for your skin. Mm, okay. It keeps this nice glow. Nice. Uh, and it, yeah, it has a bunch of other health properties. Cool. Um, but it's definitely anti-inflammatory, so helps with infections, helps sort of like clean out a right. lot of different things that you may have going on in your gut. Right, right. So, okay. um, yeah, people have it as a tea, people drink right. it as a tea, people do it as like a face mask. It's all these different ways that you can use turmeric, but um, yeah, I love it in, in mm -hmm. this. And shout out to Happy Healthy, Latina <laughs> for sort of you want. putting that out there on a video and I fell in love and now I use it so cool. um okay well let's get started this so one. this is gonna be like a small batch we don't have to make a huge jar full but usually I do like a jar like this and I keep it in the fridge okay. for a month or longer because right. it, it it really just stays um intact and you can right. use it for that long right. um but some folks freeze it which yeah, i think yeah. is a great idea too like that's awesome mm -hmm. i i don't ever do that i should because i always have a lot in the fridge that i can right. easily put away but i i use it for a lot of different things so i just keep a jar in my fridge at all times okay um You're yeah ready. yeah yeah, so yeah, we can like, I can get started on sort of like chopping everything. Um, this is how they look. You can take out the seeds. I take out the seeds, but oh. you don't have to. You, you can also just throw it in there. Um, yeah. Do I need my sous chef? <laughs> I have an assistant yeah. here. <laughs> Oiled. Um, thanks. Yeah, so I'm gonna do like one one red onion. That should be good. Also, everyone should have at least one good kitchen knife. Right. Um, just one sharp one, you know. Right. I I feel like a lot of people hold on to all these like uh uh what's the word? Dole. Dull, 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 knives, dull, yeah. dull knives and it's like why are, are you even using that you can cut your finger right like even like just easier because yeah. you're trying so hard to cut right. things yeah. but once you have like a really good one shout out to joe for this knife joe he got it for my birthday joe. yeah yeah okay yeah thank good. you joe look <laughs> putting it to use <laughs> um yeah so i think it's super important to have a really good knife and right. invest in it because it's worth it and it'll last you. um it'll last you forever and you just go get it sharpened um if you live in, in new york city i go to corin okay and i go there sometimes like if i have trouble with sharpening a knife because sometimes i do because i'm not an expert Right. So I go there and I get it sharpened for like fifteen dollars, and okay. you could bring any knife in there, and they will hook it up and they'll fix it for you. 
Nice. So, Corin. How, how, how often you guys like? How often you going like, how often you go to get it sharpened? Um, I don't, I well since all of this quarantine, I have not gone in. Right, right, right. It's in Soho. Okay. Um, but there you can get a really good knife for less than a hundred dollars. Okay. But it's worth it. Yeah. There's obviously other knives there that are more expensive. It just depends on what your budget is, but it's worth it. Just do it because, you know, you should be cooking right now anyways. You right. should be cooking your, your own food, right? Um, okay, so, wait, I got to do the juice. One second. Okay. This is going to be really loud. Um, okay. We can talk about adobo. We can talk about um, making our own adobo. Okay. That's, While we do that, that's yeah. our next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, obviously, mm -hmm. with these uh, big brands that uh -huh. sort of um, <laughs> they play themselves, right? Play themselves and just sort of like, um, yeah. Yeah. Play themselves. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, and I think we can talk about it. We can talk about Goya no, and, and sort of like, yeah. No, you you know, can go. I think it's funny because on our very first Ponte Hedy, a part of that was a part of the conversation. Um, and I think people have slowly sort of been going away from pre pre made adobo, pre made. Right. All these things that, you know, our grandparents weren't buying, right? So over time, <laughs> got easier, for lack of a better word, they were going to the supermarket and just buying it, right? As, as opposed to preparing it. And I think through that right. process, so much of, of our history and our, our sort of, you know, what we naturally did got lost. Um, and in that yes. process as well, a lot of it became unhealthy, right? So as our food sort of went away from us, it also became more unhealthy, but it wasn't just because us, yes. right? So it's great. I think it's uh, it's beautiful what you're doing, you know, um, and it's great that it's sort of becoming almost common now where I see people making their own adobo, making their own sofrito. Yeah, I love the brand Loisa. Mm -hmm. um, they have awesome products. Mm -hmm. I have the adobo, I have the sazon, and right. it's made with organic ingredients. Right. And um, they're based out of Brooklyn, I believe. Okay. Um, and so shout out to them doing great work because we need, you know, we need people like them who are actually like um, giving us these good products of quality, not with any preservatives and other weird things in them. So I really like their brand, okay. uh -huh. but you can also make your own at home. And that's, yeah. that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, so adobo, I don't buy it anymore. I haven't bought it for years. You know, okay. I don't even think it's necessary because, uh -huh. um, I find other ways of like adding flavor with mm -hmm. just the real thing mm -hmm. and adjusting it to my own liking and my own right. taste. Um, so also it has a bunch of salt. So just, so just put salt then yeah. <laughs> or just like <laughs> use the real thing yeah. versus you adding all these preservatives mm -hmm. and other things into your food. It's like, why, why are you doing that? Yeah. Um, so I love, this oregano, Dominican oregano, this is um, what I send my mom and my tias and everyone on the West Coast because we don't have this. It's only on, it's like Florida or here. Um, I don't know where else they sell it, but if you can find this, this is really key for the sofrito and adobo because um, I find that this has way more flavor than Italian or other dried oregano i feel like it is lemony or limey right. um has like a citrus note to it so i feel like this is the best thing yes i've, to, I've, I've been told many to times get. oregano is like <laughs> it is it is it is it definitely does say and it's not that expensive you can right. find it at the bazaar at sea town um different places sell it so um some turmeric again turmeric uh i love the color that it gives to the food yeah. um you don't have to put that much because turmeric uh can get bitter if you put too much okay so it's just a little bit um right. and 
yeah, I think this is also a key, in, you know, a key ingredient in this edible. So okay. this, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of cayenne, okay. just just for some like a tiny bit of spice. Right, right. Um, black pepper. Um, everyone should have this too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a uh, pepper grinder. Mm -hmm. This is also a game changer in the kitchen. You should have this. Don't get the already pre-ground stuff. It's not <laughs> as uh, spicy and fresh. It right. just tones down the flavor when you buy it already ground. So I like to do it fresh. Um, yeah, so garlic powder. Garlic powder. Garlic okay. powder. Um, so it's five ingredients for okay. the adobo. Which is not crazy. These are all things that people have, I would think, in your country. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit. Yeah, kind of. So I would say about a tablespoon of um, the garlic. Okay. Um, oregano, the same. So that's okay. what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm also using this kind of spoon. Mm -hmm. I don't really measure. Sometimes right. I do. <laughs> I, well, yeah, when I'm at work, I have to follow yeah. or um, follow recipes. But when you're at home, have fun. You don't have to be so strict. Do you make your own? I started. I actually went last week and you did? bought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of it was funny because I I couldn't. I was I was about to buy online. I was gonna buy uh, achote because you couldn't find it. Oh yeah, I have them. Okay. Um. Uh -huh. I have it here. Uh -huh. Should I grind it? That's uh, what I, should I think we'll be grinding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I but, never have done that in uh, adobo. I use it when I make the pasteles. I do the okay. oil. Right, 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 right. But I've never actually grinded them. So. Yeah. Um. This also gives it a nice color. Why don't we try? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, I want to say maybe half a teaspoon, a uh, half a tablespoon of turmeric. Okay. You don't want to go crazy. Right, right. Some cayenne for some spice, like a okay. little bit. You don't have to put that much. I like a little bit. And I see some and people. Black uh, pepper. Black pepper. Some people use onion powder. Oh yeah. You could do onion powder too. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to keep it five and under. Five. Okay. Okay. Five ingredients. All right. <laughs> Just, you know. Yeah. Then, so, then you start getting a little complicated, and right. then you might not have certain things. So I'm just keeping it simple. But yes, you can add that. That yeah. would be really good. Okay. You're putting it in a bowl. Everything, right? Yeah, I'm putting it in a bowl. Um. There you go. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, achote. Mm -hmm. That means I have to take out. I have to bust out the my my little like grinder or something. Right. Yeah. I mean, I haven't made it yet. You know what? I'm gonna leave it out because uh, I don't think we have that much time. No, we have. Yeah, yeah. But oh, so you just so, mix it all together. So, Salt. Huh? Right. You would just mix it all together, right? With your yeah, hands. Yeah, just, mm. just use your fingers. Okay, even better. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, where is the salt? And just some kosher salt. Okay. I want to say do the same. Do like about a, a tablespoon. Okay. Yeah. And why kosher salt? Like, why not just like table salt? Like, is there a difference? Salt, um. Is there a difference? Oh, it's the iodine. It's the iodine in okay. the table salt with the girl with the umbrella. The yes. That, uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. um, I get this one because okay. I like it better. Um, I use it to, it's a good salt to season with. Okay. Um, you can, you can um, basically like use other fancier salts to like, okay. Um, put on top of things, but I like this one to sort of like season for everything. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, this is kind of it right here. Look. There it is. Mm -hmm. Here's the adobo. Can you see it? Yeah. 
And how long that's would it last? Like, if you make it, like, how long can you sort of, like, uh, use it for? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, a lot of dry seasonings mm -hmm. don't last that long. And right. we, um, we tend to sort of keep it in our cabinet for yeah. years. And yeah. it's like, uh -huh. I don't know why people do that. I mean, I used to do that, too, I think, probably. Uh, or, or just keeping it for way too long and it doesn't have any flavor anymore so dry seasoning if you're gonna grind it and do it yourself um then it'll last longer but if you're buying it like how i did i would keep it on the shelf three weeks three weeks okay yeah, yeah. just like go through it don't make a lot either exactly. just like make Mm -hmm. Make enough where you think that you know you're gonna be able to use it, but right. you don't want this to be just sitting. Because then it just is it's not fresh and doesn't have as much flavor. Right. So I'm just gonna try it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good? It's good. Alright. <laughs> yeah. I think it has the right amount of salt. Ooh, it's kind of spicy. Mm. I put maybe too much cayenne, right. but yeah, this right. is right. the color. Okay. It's nice. Okay. This is a really simple one. Mm -hmm. Again, you can add onion powder. You can add other things to it. Mm -hmm. um, but this, I feel like, is easy with these five ingredients. Right, right, right. Um, and yes, yeah, so yeah. for those asking, we'll, we'll share that recipe uh, with everybody so that they can have it. Yes, it's I so simple. It. It's so quick. Like, I did that in two minutes. Mm -hmm. OK, so all right. So frito, garlic, peeled garlic. Mm -hmm. like, how much are you making? Like, like for a little, how much would you say you're adding? <laughs> uh, My mom, yeah. <laughs> a I, cup I, and a half? A cup and a half, okay. A cup and a half. All right. Cup and a half. All right, we'll go with that. Um, if I add more, you know, I would add more, in, you know, more ingredients, but I'm just going to keep it. Um, just gonna do a small batch. Okay. I don't wanna yeah. Do it. Sorry. But about a cup and a half. About a cup and a half. Right? Um, and then I'm adding some chopped bell pepper. Pepper, yeah. And ancito too. Very good. Nice. Um, red onion. And I'm gonna add some more. I also do, like, I also don't measure, which um, is not ideal when you're trying to produce a bunch of jars for people right. and it has to be consistent. So yeah. I'm currently trying to lock down a recipe. Right. Um, but every time it's different, but that's also the beautiful part is that it doesn't always have to come out the same exact way. Maybe it'll, it'll have more garlic one time maybe it'll have more peppers it just also depends on what you have so sure. you don't have to be so strict again you know when it comes to this it's very forgiving um and yeah just put whatever you kind of feel like mm -hmm. in it and do it to cater to your taste buds basically right. um cilantro i'm gonna add some i like using the stems everything I was Nothing goes to waste. Okay, okay. Nothing goes to waste. Um, yeah. Just use all of it. You mm -hmm. don't have to pick off the leaves. Okay. Just cut it. Right. A lot of people put it at cow, yes. but right. I don't I don't find it. I don't know where it's at. I never see it in any of the supermarkets by me. Really? But I mean So now I'm thinking, huh? No, I, I've also seen it like when you buy pre pre purchase, like pre made, I should say. You see, like, right. and then you'll see sofrito. Like, it's two separate things. Yeah, which I don't understand that. What is that? I think it's that doesn't make sense. There's something there. Ask my mom. Yeah. Give me a, a roundabout answer. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so we 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 have almost everything. Okay. Um, lime juice. Thank you to the assistant who made this That's fresh good. lime juice. Look at that. <laughs> You want to make all right. So in terms of the process, you did it. You have to. Should you always do it in that order? Uh, what and do you mean, order. like adding yeah. all the fresh ingredients, right. then juice? And then juice, yeah. Yes, I think so because I like to sort of see 
how much juice I'm putting. Right. So for this, I would go up to maybe right here. So where the garlic ends. Um, yeah, I don't know if y'all, if everyone can see. Okay. You see that? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna go like maybe right there with juice. I don't want to fill it up because then it's right. too much juice. You right. don't want that much juice. Right. Um, just enough to get it going. Yeah, and you can always um, add, right? Right, yeah. you can always add more. So, just add a little bit. There you go. I might say like a cup. About a cup, okay. A cup. Yeah. Um, salt, again, I'm sort of like eyeballing it, but I will have the right portion. <laughs> after all this is done i'll figure it out i, 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 I will send it to, to yeah. you to share mm -hmm. um yeah also the reason why i add the salt in it is because you want it ready to go you want it ready to like season whatever it is that you want to do mm -hmm. um that way um it makes your job easier you don't have to add the salt to whatever protein you're, you're, you're doing, or if you're making mono or, or if you're doing beans, mm -hmm. the salt is already in there. I don't like to add too much salt. Right, right, Because you, you, you want to sort of, um, you want to be able to control the salt that's in it. So yeah, yeah. pepper. Hurry up. <laughs> You're good. How time do we have? Oh my god. You understand. Um, also, I have a red snapper that I wanted to do. Okay. So I don't know if I have time for this. Do I have time? So let's, let's, let's see what happens. Huh? I think so. Yeah, you should be, you should be good. I, yeah, I think so, right? It's quick. We gotta get this oil hot. <laughs> Oregano. Dominican oregano. Make sure you. Uh, Dominican. <laughs> Let's be clear. I also have. Forgot about the turmeric. Mm. This is what turmeric looks like. I don't know if you've ever okay. seen it. Yeah, no, I there it is. Yeah. Um. So I like to just use a spoon. Okay just peel the skin off like you would ginger i don't i don't know if you know this trick mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the spoon yeah. this is really easy to take off the skin of ginger and turmeric super fast so just a little bit, a little bit okay maybe one more what I, are you having for dinner uh, I don't even know. I, I think I'm going to do uh, salmon. I saw it out. Like, I don't know if I'm actually, I might end up <laughs> putting it back in the freezer. <laughs> Why? No, you can't do that. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Once you take it out of the freezer, wait, was it I in know, the freezer I, I, already? It's not fully defrosted, that's what I'm saying. So, like, by the time. Oh. And after watching. No, you got to cook it. It's, it's Yeah, fish. I'm getting hungry. It's, 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 we'll see what happens. We'll see. That's so easy. You can just bake it in the oven. All right. We'll see. <laughs> I promises. That sounds good. Yeah, what are the sides? What, what uh, are you having with it? Keep it simple. White rice. Like white rice and salmon, that's like, you know, that's like my grandmother. Like I grew up on that. So that's, that's. Yum. You were saying cool. that um, your grandmother, she would make bacalao. That was her, her yeah, favorite so, thing. Yeah. So well, the thing is, you know, I think that the, the conversation started because I was talking about how like, you know, traditionally, you know, like, when it comes to Puerto Rican cuisine, it's like, oh, penit, penit, but that's not really something we would eat, at least, you know, right. often as we do now. And so, I, you know, having conversations with my grandmother, she would always, I would ask her, like, you know, what, you know, she grew up very poor in Camuy, she's from Camuy, um, and she would talk about Camuy. Camuy, yeah, was on the West Coast. Um, yes. And she would say, you know, what, what often be eaten was actually bacalao. Bacalao was affordable, it also could be soft, so, you know, if you don't have refrigerated it's it was very common. Um, but, like, Meat to her growing up wasn't something she had every day. You know, it was almost like a special occasion. You know, and like right. you know, the Christmas thing. You know, but yes. you know, soybean, rice and beans. 
Uh, but then, you know, it's a company that you can kind of read, you know, you guy or something. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that's, that was actually more common, you know? And he does everything. Let's do it. <laughs> Can't even hear it. So that was less than a minute. Huh? Less than a minute. Yeah, that was really fast, right? Um, it is kind of loose. I mm -hmm. put a lot of juice in it, um, but I don't mind it. Mm -hmm. Today, it's not as green, but it, it's okay. It just means that there's more garlic in it, right. and that it's all good. Garlic right. is delicious. Mm -hmm. I like it garlicky. Mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of it. This is like... You could also see the red onion in there, so it's kind of pink. It just right. depends on your ingredients. Right. It really does. Yeah. Um, and whatever you want to put in it. So right. this is kind of the color. This is the consistency. It's kind of, it's like, kind of wet. Mm -hmm. you, know, yeah. you know, we can see. Yeah, we can see, yeah. Yeah. So... This one has a lot of lime juice. I put oh, a lot of lime juice, well, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think it's perfect. Yeah, so I'm going to warm up this oil and see if I can do this fish real <laughs> quick. Um, I feel like we can do it. Yeah. Uh, the best oil to fry in, mm -hmm. we were having this conversation too, uh, I find the best oil to use, period, is mm -hmm. coconut oil. Okay. Um, it's just the healthiest. It's the oil that we absorb the most out of any other oil. We actually, like, get all of the nutrients from coconut oil. It has a lot of health benefits, too. Um, also, it's really good to fry in because it, it holds heat. Um, oh. So you don't have to worry about it, like, burning on you or smoking. It has a high smoking point more than olive oil more than avocado oil those are good for like salads or things right. that you're not gonna fry in basically right. so or if you don't have coconut oil canola oil is good too but it's just not as healthy um uh -huh. yeah so i like doing coconut oil so that's what we're gonna use how about for the just, fish can you, have you ever used like coconut oil? huh Coconut oil for rice, like white rice or anything like that? Oh, the best. Really? The okay. best. Well, I've had coconut oil. Actually, that's my favorite thing. And okay. I think I got my mom on the coconut oil because mm -hmm. now she's like, look, I have, you know, I have coconut oil in in my nice bottle. And she uses it for Everything. quinoa because mm -hmm. I told her to do quinoa, um, white rice. Right, With right. any kind of grain, I feel like it gives it such a nice flavor. Nice. Okay. Um, and it's just healthier for you. So right. if you're gonna fry, I, you know, try to use oil that's mm -hmm. good for you. You know, mm -hmm. and and obviously fry uh, every once in a while. Don't right. do it all the time. Balance. Yeah. Is Balance. That, exactly. Is that the opening technique you learned in school? <laughs> <laughs> uh no. No, okay. That's not sanitary, right? <laughs> when you put your mouth on it, what are you doing? Right. Um, I do it here at home because I'm yeah. yeah, so this is you know, boom. In the pan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can have this with tostones, that's the classic combo. You yes. could do maduros, you could do um a side salad but it you know it'll be on the lighter side right. but i feel like some people are af afraid to uh fry fish and i don't know why because it's actually really simple and, right, right. and easy to do mm -hmm. um you just you know you gotta be careful because the fish has water on it so you can like pat it dry um mm -hmm. 
but I kind of just go for it because the sofrito is wet. So right. it's like either way, it's gonna kind of like splatter, but you just gotta sit back, you know. lean a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. How do you prepare the fish before? Do you put like lime on it? What do you do anything? I'm gonna put the sofrito. But no, like no, no uh, are you putting anything else on it or are you just going straight to it? Am I what? Sorry. Are you putting yeah. anything else on it or are you going straight with the sofrito? I mean, it has um, already there, but. Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some slits. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the red snapper. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just gonna add some slits to it. I wish that I had a better angle, but I'll show you. Yeah. I like to cut it and put slits in it so right. the flavor could get inside. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very meaty, so you can do that with a mm -hmm. red snapper. But I do this across the board with okay. all different kinds of fish. Um, yeah, I just you get the flavor in. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, so it looks like this. See? Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so I'm gonna use the adobo. We're gonna add this too. Okay. Um, yeah. Ooh, this is hot. I had it right by the stove. Not smart. Mm -hmm. So just sprinkle it mm -hmm. a little bit. Get it into the little slits that you cut. Get dirty. Get in there. It's okay. Also, the way that you know that the fish is fresh, mm -hmm. the eyes should always be clear. There yeah. should not be any like fogginess. Once you see that, do not buy it. Right. It's just not fresh anymore. Um, also, smell it if it has a weird smell. Obviously, that's not good. But this one, you don't smell anything. I don't smell any fishiness. So that tells me that it's super fresh. So yeah, so this is adobo on it. Kind of spread it all around. I got it in all these little slits. Yeah. Uh, the sofrito. Um, this is pretty wet. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna use the one that I have in the fridge because it's like less limey, less right. lime juice, and it'll hold on better. Right. Um, right. Very. Okay. Like I said, you can keep it in your fridge for a long time. This one I made three weeks ago. Okay. And I still have some, and it's good. Still is delicious, and it actually has more flavor because it's it's sitting been just there. marinating, there just go. been mm -hmm. sitting there. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah. So I'm just gonna add it. I'm just gonna put some on. It gives it a nice freshness. Um. Lots of raw garlic, and so who, who doesn't want that on their fish? Yeah, this one's better because it's it's not super Safe. liquidy. So when I put it in the oil, it won't splatter as much. But either way, it's gonna splatter. So we just gotta be careful. Just stay away, because um, I've gotten burned several times with hot oil. It's not fun. No, never is. No. Those scars are no joke. <laughs> So yeah, this is kind of what it looks like. Nice and seasony. And this one it came already clean for me. Okay. Right. I don't have to do anything. Um, so like the oil is hot, yes. Yeah. So here we go. Here we go. In the oil. That's it. That's it. Here, let's see if I can move the camera. Maybe. Perfect. How long would you cook that for? Uh, maybe five minutes each side. Uh, it's okay. quick. It's right, very right. fast. Yeah. yeah. So see, um, that's about like a cup and a half of coconut oil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice, right? Yeah, looks good. Uh, I have some maduro, so I'm gonna fry that after this right. is done, and that could. And that's it. Super fast too. And that's it. This is gonna be my dinner tonight. There you go. Um, well thank you, Gabby. Um
Let me see. Oh, you, yeah, that's ready to go. That's definitely yeah. Good. Ready. Yes, yes, yes. So, Gabby, um, people yes. want to buy your world famous sofrito. Where, or do you want to know more about you or, or get more? Uh, where can they go to find out more? Um, they can contact me via Instagram because I feel like that has been the easiest, the quickest way to get an answer from me because it's like, I see the message and I will get back to you pretty quickly. Um, you can also go on my website and join uh, my email list. And that way you can really be in contact with me for the next batch that I am going to do. I'm taking a little bit of a hiatus right now, taking um, some time to get organized and kind of um, figure out this next batch that I'm going to do in the next couple weeks. So for those who have purchased already, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, keep using it, have fun with it, uh, use it in all these different kinds of ways. It's super versatile. And um, I feel like it complements so many dishes. Mm -hmm. And that's the cool part that it's not only with Caribbean food, it kind of goes across the board with different cuisines and flavors. Also, have fun. Food is relative to whoever it is, and so um, I, yeah, I'm super happy and pumped that I've been able to um, share it with people. Yeah, so the next time I make a batch, you will get an email from me. So the best way is either on Instagram, send me an email, or go on my website and add yourself to my email list. And what is your website? ChefGabrielaRamos.com. Okay, cool. And we'll, we'll make sure this is an affirmation for people who want to stay in contact and everything. One awesome. more question. Have you learned to make coffee yet? Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I know how to make coffee. All right, bro. That's funny that you're yeah. even saying that. Disrespect. Yes, but it's true. Disrespect <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, yes, I make the best coffee. Ask my dad because he, cause he's a master at making coffee. All right, I just flipped it. That was five minutes. Yep. All right. There it is. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. Well, Gabby, yeah. we're going to let you enjoy your meal. Uh, thank you for teaching us how to make sofrito and adobo. Um, and also, you know, Having a conversation, I think, is really important about eating healthy, um, particularly these times. And, you know, the awareness is becoming more common about, you know, some of the foods that we're eating um, that are actually not traditional to us. I'm great. I'm glad to have people like you who are committed to that work and think it's really important. No, thank you. It was my pleasure. Um, I'm happy to be able to be on this platform and talk to everyone um, about what I'm currently doing. And thank you to El Museo for organizing this event. Truly honored, pleasure. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for tuning in. Um, it's truly a pleasure and an honor uh, you know, to make sure you stay in contact with the museo. You can go to museo.org uh, to find out what was going on, upcoming events. Uh, make sure you join the, the mailing list. Also, of course, we're all social media platforms. We're there. Uh, there's a lot of events coming up, and you know, we look forward to having you there. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye. Take thank care. you. Take care.